everyone welcome back to my channel i am here with a what i feel is like a basic feminine hygiene kind of tips for you guys something i haven't fully gone into depth with is feminine hygiene for like our downstairs area i've kind of touched it here and there i feel like my younger self was kind of lost as far as vaginal care and i feel like i've found some things that really work for me and it may work for you it may not i do do want to reiterate that everybody is kind of different when it comes to down there but I do feel like there are some basics that will work for literally everybody if you have some more tips that maybe I don't mention feel free to leave them down in the comment section down below and get started let's start off by mentioning two things that if you've been with me for a while through this channel then you kind of already know but if you're new I highly highly recommend two of these things to keep your vaginal health in check One is going to be a cranberry pills I use the azo brand azo brand I'm not really sure how you go about it but cranberry urinary tract health to cleanse and protect. If you don't like taking pills, you can drink cranberry juice. I believe it says one of these pills. Yes, one serving equals one glass of cranberry juice. Also has vitamin C. I typically actually do both. I love cranberry juice. So I like to drink it in the morning, but I also take one of these pills. Second thing is a probiotic. This is the brand that I highly recommend. I will link both of these products in the description box below. I use the Garden of Life Doctor Formulated Probiotics Woman Daily Care 40 Billion CFU. This has 16 probiotic strains and helps with vaginal health, immune health, and digestive balance. I feel like a probiotic, if nothing, if you don't want to take the cranberry pills, I feel like you have to take a probiotic this to me is the best probiotic out there I've tried multiple different ones I feel like this one has helped me the most as far as health goes if you look on Amazon you will see that it has quite a bit of like amazing reviews if you don't want to take my word for it maybe you can take other people's words for it but this is the one that I highly recommend so this next tip some people will probably agree with me some people will might question me a little bit but I promise you if there is anything that has made one of the biggest differences to my vaginal health this is in like the top three we are going to talk about underwear now me personally I don't wear underwear and I haven't for years only time I do wear it is if I'm on my period and it's at nighttime because at nighttime I like to wear a pad just in case for some reason I don't want any leakage on my bed so the only time you will see me in underwear is at nighttime on my period or if I'm wearing lingerie for a few minutes for my husband other than that I don't wear it at all and I would say this is the absolute way to go it does take a minute to get used to but once you get into the habit of not wearing underwear, not only do you save money, but I promise you will probably never go back to wearing it. Now, if you can't stomach the thought of not ever wearing underwear, the important part of this is that you choose to wear 100% cotton underwear. That way your vagina can breathe. Now, the reason I don't wear underwear is that my vagina is breathing all the time. My underwear is such as like silk or lace or things that aren't 100% cotton. That bacteria and dirt and nastiness sweat whatever is going on down there will end up getting trapped because the underwear is not breathable so everything that's trapped in there mixes up with your vagina and then it's a whole disaster and that's kind of what triggers most of the time because it's tight and compact and not breathable that really triggers bv yeast infections and urinary tract infections and so forth if you want to wear silk and lace i just recommend that you don't wear it too often also thongs are something that i don't recommend wearing too often just because I remember learning about this and feeling so grossed out from it because I used to be like a thong supporter. I wore nothing but thongs. And now if I do wear underwear, it is high waisted, it's a granny panty, it's all of the coverage and it is 100% cotton. It's probably everything you don't wanna wear, but everything that you should be wearing if you're going to be wearing underwear. But thongs have obviously that string that go into your butt crack and you're moving every day, you're getting up, you're sitting down, you're walking, and as your body is shifting, the string and the underwear shifts as well. 
And so everything that is coming from booty hole, all that bacteria and nonsense after you, you know, take a large dump, it's shifting back and forth. And so all of that back there is coming to your front side. Again, attracting the worst possible things that you want to go near that area. I really don't even wear thongs. Like I said, if I'm wearing lingerie, I will, but that's after I've showered. I haven't pooped. I haven't done nothing. I am clean as clean can be in that region. And I'm only wearing it until my husband takes it off. You're going to be wearing nothing but thongs. I know you probably want to buy the really sexy, lacy, silky type thongs. If you're going to be wearing them 24 seven, I really feel like you should at least buy 100% cotton ones so that your vagina can breathe. That all of that nastiness isn't kind of trapped in there. Another issue that triggers our vagina is tight clothing. And this is something that I really had to like come to terms with, especially when it comes to like super tight jeans. So if you have really tight clothing on, you have non-breathable underwear on, it's just all sitting there. And you may not think that nothing is going on down there. You might think it's all golden, but really a lot is trapped up in there and you're going to get warm and moist and all sorts of things. And that's just all sitting in there. So try, like I said, if you can't go with no underwear 24 seven, I would recommend at least going to bed without any underwear. That way your vagina can have a break and she can breathe at nighttime. I wear no pants and I wear no underwear at nighttime. Obviously during the day I wear pants, but I still have no underwear on. Next tip, and this is going to be, I feel like so basic, but I feel like it's one that people ignore the most. Drink your freaking water. Watch how you eat. I'm not saying I eat completely healthy all the time because I definitely don't. I frequent Taco Bell quite often. I also love a cherry vanilla Coke from Sonic. How However, I do personally drink over 120 ounces of water a day. I know that there are people out there that think water is disgusting and don't even want to touch it with a 10 foot pole. And I'm telling you, you have to drink water. One, not only to survive, but two, it will make a huge difference. The more water that you drink and the foods that you eat can play a huge role in the health of your vagina and how it smells. If you're not drinking enough water, I highly recommend it's something that you start working towards. And like I said, I'm not someone who eats healthy 24 seven, but I do eat a lot of fruits and vegetables day in and day out. And I will say that if I ate McDonald's and Taco Bell every day, I'm pretty sure my vagina would not be that healthy and it wouldn't be great to taste. It probably tastes a lot like salt and grease and who knows what else. But we balance that with, you know, the fruits and vegetables and good proteins and fats and all the water so queen please drink your water stop avoiding it this next tip i actually learned after i got my first urinary tract infection when i was a young kid i didn't know about it and once i was told by my doctor i have implemented that the rest of my life and it is to either shower before or shower after your bath. You've been following me for a while when I do my bath time kind of routine videos for you guys, you always see me shower before I get in the bath. When I was younger, I didn't really see the point in that. I just wanted to take a bath, whatever. But I personally do know there are a lot of women who just get in the bath to soak and they don't bother showering before or after they get in. And when you do that, you're literally sitting in all the filth and dirt that you've collected throughout the day dead skin cells you're just sitting in there no matter if you have soap going on in there or whatever else you like to put in your bathtub it doesn't cancel out the fact that everything you collected that day everything that you touched and went up against everything that kind of clung to you is now in that bathtub and you're soaking yourself in it and it is just going in and out of your vagina. Now, obviously you guys have seen me shower before I get in there. I clean myself with soap before I get in the bath. I do also rinse myself specifically this area with just like some clean, fresh water when I get out. And I also make sure to pee right after I get out of the bath. I do treat it as like having sex when you're supposed to pee right after you have sexual intercourse. Let's talk about cleaning yourself next. So as you guys have seen, I mostly clean my downstairs area with a bar of soap. I use the Dr. Bronner's Baby Unscented Soap. To me, that has worked the best. I do not clean inside my vagina. You don't need to put anything up in your vagina as far as cleaning products go. You will regret it 
if you haven't already regretted it, you will regret it sooner or later. It is nothing, and please hear me out, nothing needs to go into your vagina to clean it. No soaps. I don't care if there's a soap for vaginal cleaning. Do not put it up inside yourself. And thirdly, for the love of all that is holy, do not douche. Your vagina is self-cleansing. She cleans on her own. That discharge that comes out, that is her cleaning herself. She's getting rid of everything that doesn't need to be in there to begin with. You do not need to shove something in there like a douche or a vaginal soap to try and clean it because that's not going to work. You're just going to make her worse. I really highly don't recommend any vaginal soap that especially has a scent to it. Like Summer's Eve with all those fancy scents. Um, I know Honey Pot has like a scent. I did buy Honey Pot. I bought the unscented sensitive version. It still has a little bit of a scent, so I really don't frequent it often. But I highly, highly recommend you use something unscented and sensitive when it comes to cleaning the outside of your vagina. Now you can just use water. My gynecologist has told me that it's okay to use the soap that I use, but you can also just use water. You don't technically have to go up with the soap and clean your outside self with soap. I just like to clean myself outside, but like I said, I use an unscented baby soap to do it. Anything scented around that area is just asking for a disaster. Let's talk about sexual intercourse. So if you haven't gathered by now, our vaginas are literally sensitive to every single thing on this planet. Sexual intercourse is a big one. And so I want to express need to practice clean sex. Stop letting men or women touch your area or be in your area if they are not clean. Haven't washed your hands? Don't come near me. Haven't showered? Don't come near me. Haven't brushed your teeth? No, sir. Especially if you've been eating or smoking or drinking, don't come near her. You're not allowed. You need to go clean your mouth. You need to go clean your penis and you need to go clean your hands. Everything about you, just clean it before you come near here. I get it that sometimes things are hot and heavy and you don't really wanna be like, okay, wait, let's go shower first. I get it, but if that's a regular thing for you, I need you to stop, take a breath, take a step back and say, is the yeast infection, is the BV, is the urinary tract infection, is the itchiness and pain really worth it? No, nothing is worth that. A dirty partner is going to upset her and you live with her every single day. You have to deal with this. Whatever goes on down here, you have to deal with it. So stop letting dirty people come to this area. My next tip has to do with suppositories because after you have sex, you are supposed to get up and go pee. And sometimes I don't make it that far. I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm laying flat in the bed and I have no energy to move at all. I started taking suppositories. I don't have any right now because I'm obviously not having sexual intercourse at all. My husband's in a totally different state. We're not seeing each other. So I don't have a new pack of suppositories to show you, but I will either show a picture and I will link it in the description box down below of the suppositories that I take. Now let me tell you something, when I first stumbled upon these, I don't know why I thought I would be taking them orally, but I soon learned that that's not how they go. Don't lose your shit like I did when I found out I had to actually stick it up inside me. Now, I know I said no douching or soaps or anything like that. Suppositories are definitely different and are recommended in times by a gynecologist. So I'm not just like speaking out of my ass when I say this. I remember when Trevor and I were having a lot of sex. If you don't know, sex throws your pH off, but so does semen. Also was working out like six times a week and I sweat a lot and I couldn't always get to the shower right away. A whole lot of things were happening down there and there is bacterial vaginosis. I noticed change in my smell down there. It wasn't like plug your nose type of anything, but it wasn't my normal scent. And I remember talking in a group with other women, you know, we all experience it at some point and we were talking talking and the suppository came up. So I bought some off of Amazon. I put in the first suppository and the next day, like everything was a million times better. There was such a huge difference from the night before I took it and the next day that I was completely sold on the product. I don't take them every day. Like I said, I normally take them if I 
work out or I'm like hot and sweaty down there and I wasn't in a position to get out of the wet and sweaty clothes right away. If I just had sex and I wasn't able to pee right after, then the next morning I will take a suppository just to kind of help prevent getting anything worse. I'm telling you that right there was probably the biggest like game changer for me just to have that on hand because I'm not perfect. Like sometimes I do wear tight clothes. Like I said, I'm with my husband, you know, we're going at it. Like there, our vaginas are so sensitive that I think it's hard to be perfect all the time. So I just think having suppositories on deck are a must. This one's also a basic one, but honestly, if my mom told me about it when I was younger, I didn't listen. So I just want to put it out there for you in case you are stubborn like me, wipe front to back, front to back. When I was younger, I just really didn't care and I was just like wiping. I know that's so gross, but I'm just being honest with you because I know I'm probably not the only one. You probably don't want to come forward and say that you do that too, but it's okay. I'll say it for you. When I was younger, I was just wiping and then I would go. Make sure you wipe front to back. You don't want that bacteria, like I said, when you're wearing a thong, to go from your back to your front because it would just throw everything off. It's amazing that we say wipe front to back, but then we're so like into thongs now that I think of it because it's literally the same exact thing as just wiping back to front when you're wearing a thong that's just coming up to your front anyway. Next tip, kind of backpacking off of what I just said, Try not to sit in wet clothes like swimsuits or if your pants are wet, things like that. Try not to sit in wet clothes too long or sweaty clothes too long. Bacteria just clings to moisture and it's just sitting right there and it's not breathing and it's not going anywhere and it's just, your vagina is just collecting all of it. So try if you're like really hot and sweaty down there after a workout or just in general like this Texas heat girl, try to change out of that as fast as you possibly can. And if it's been a while, like I said, I would take a suppository that night so that I could possibly prevent anything from happening. Now, this is going to be for something that you're older. I can't remember if this starts at 18 or 21. I honestly don't remember the age, but when you are of age, I need you. <laughs> And I'm, I'm like talking to myself when I say this too because I hate every minute of it and it is a battle to convince myself to go. Get your pap smears, okay? They're important. You wanna get yourself checked out. It's there to help you. It's there to protect your vaginal health. It's not comfortable. I hate every living minute of it, especially because I feel like my juices are just going everywhere and it's so embarrassing for me because I'm like, this is not really actually turning me on. I don't know what's going on. There's like metal devices in my insides and I'm just like leaking everywhere. Oh, I hate it. Hearing that everything's okay down there, I wanna say it's worth it. I really do for the point of this video, but I hate pap smears, but they're so necessary, okay? So just when you're of age, get it done. I know that it's awkward. They're they're not that comfortable, honestly. If you find them to be comfortable, kudos to you. I wish I was that strong down there, but I'm just not. My next tip, I've said this so many times and I'm gonna say it again because I'm sure there's still some of you that do it. Stop cleaning yourself with toilet paper. I'm not even recommending to change at this point. Now I'm just telling you to stop cleaning yourself with toilet paper. We're gonna use wipes, honey, okay? And I think I use this analogy, but I'm gonna say it again. When you have a baby, when when they go to the bathroom and do you grab toilet paper and clean them with it no why because half the time that shit is still sticking to them like the toilet paper literally does nothing and then if you do eventually get it all off if you smell down there guess what it's still gonna smell like poop and pee it doesn't actually clean you it just kind of gets the stuff off of you but you still stink down there we're gonna just kill two birds with one stone we're going to buy wipes and we're gonna cleanse ourselves with wipes. One, because it will help get rid of the stench. Two, because it's just cleaner in general. And we wanna be clean. Because why? Because our vaginas are sensitive. Men need to use wipes too. I'm not saying this just as a feminine thing. We're gonna use wipes. When you're on your period, we're gonna use wipes. I highly recommend buying a peri bottle if you don't have one. And if you can, if you're in school and you wanna put a peri bottle in your backpack, I really recommend that you do. Or your purse. They have little travel size ones. Fill it up with water. I love using one when I'm on my period, but you can use it every single day. You fill it up with some warm water, you spray down there to get all the gunk off. Not blessed with bidets over here, so peri bottles are gonna have to do. But it's so much cleaner and safer. Your lower half health. If you don't wanna buy a peri bottle, please just buy yourself some wipes. 
just do it. Still using toilet paper at this point, I really don't know what to say. I'm not judging you, but at the same time, you're not really clean. And I'm not saying that as a hateful thing, I'm just being honest, you're not really that clean. And if I put my face to your booty hole, I bet it still smells like poop. Lastly, after all of this, I want it to be known because I know someone's probably gonna come and say something. A slight smell downstairs is completely normal. Or vagina and your juices should not smell like roses or candy or fruits. If you say it does, you're lying or you're forcing it to smell that way and eventually that's gonna come back and kick you in the ass. Everyone has a unique smell and taste. I'm gonna put that in there because you also shouldn't be tasting like any of those things. And again, if you do, you're you're doing something that you're not supposed to be doing and that's just gonna come back and haunt you. It's normal and I don't want you to think that you have to smell like any of those things for it to be healthy. If it's absolutely rank and you can smell it like without kind of sniffing down there or sniffing your underwear, or someone next to you can smell you, then you really need to go get checked by a doctor. Please don't just start doing like all these things and ignore that stench. You really need to go get it checked out. Once you're back to normal, then you can start implementing some of the tips. That way you can prevent that from happening again. But there's a difference between like just kind of a scent and then like an absolute rank scent. Oh yes, I just wanted to put it out there. That's normal and like i said your vagina is self-cleaning so if there's not discharge happening i would recommend getting that checked out as well because you should have discharge so yeah that's kind of all i can think of right now if i think of anything else that i forgot to mention in this video i will comment it down below like i said if you have any tips then you can go ahead and comment down below as well hope this kind of helps you if you're younger i know i do have quite a few younger people watching my channel and I hope that this kind of helps as far as like basic hygiene that is going to be it for this video. I appreciate you all for watching. I hope you all have an amazing week and I will see you all at my next video. Bye guys!